All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, thank you. It's great to be here. Um, can you can you read this color on the on the board? Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, it's fine over here. Yes. It's fine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. So they're feeling like quotients of mapping class groups, but uh, first I want to talk about them feeling or relatively hyperbolic them feeling. So basically, I'm gonna start uh, the talk with the with the theorem that Daniel didn't write on the board, um, but uh, but used uh, a few times. Um, so it's uh, well, it's not it's a special case of the relatively hyperbolic them feeling theorem. Uh, okay, hyperbolic. So what does this say? Um, so some version of it say us, and, and this is uh, um, this was proved by Groves and Manning and um, and Ozin, and the story would actually start from work of Thurston on three manifolds, but let's not go too far back. So you have a group which is hyperbolic uh, relative to a subgroup. Let's just say one subgroup. Um, and then there's, there's a set which, uh, which was denoted B in Daniel Sock, so the set of bad elements um, in H. And this set is finite. So the set of bad finite slopes, uh, such that whenever I have a normal subgroup of H, um, which is also finite index. Okay, so the full version doesn't need this to be finite index, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so in this situation, what I can do, uh, right, so, so this subgroup um, avoids the bad set then what I can do um, is look at G mod not quite N, the normal closure of N. So N is normal in H, but not in, in the whole group. So I have to take the normal closure. Okay. So like this, so, so what did I do? So I, have, I had this subgroup, which is potentially not hyperbolic, could be Z square, and I made it finite. So, so this obstruction to a hyperbolicity disappeared and actually turns out, you know, you get something which is hyperbolic. I, I destroyed the, the, the only part of the subgroup, of the group which it was not hyperbolic. So G mod N is hyperbolic. All right. So this theorem um, is, is true uh, as stated, um, but, and I refrain from making the analogous comment during Daniel's talk, but it, it is, this theorem is slightly more impressive if you require B to be uh, containing H minus the identity. <laughs> so that's okay. All right. So very good. So um, this is a very useful uh, theorem. Uh, it has many applications, probably most notably the proof of the virtual hacking conjecture relies heavily uh, on, on the feelings or relatively hyperbolic name feelings. Uh, right. So what I would like to do is um, is think about What's a what's the Dane feeling of um, of a mapping class group? So, so question. Um, so, what's a Dane feeling of a mapping class group? So, so mapping class groups um, are not relatively hyperbolic, um, unless the, the there are a few fake ones. I've been informed that those are fake mapping class groups, the ones that are not relatively hyperbolic. Um, and um, right, this was uh, proven, I guess, by um, Bersog, Tultu, Mosher, and Anderson, Ramayona, Shackleton, independently. Um, so, so yeah, so you cannot, you cannot quite, um, I mean, they, they don't fit into, into this framework, but um, you can try to, to do something that's philosophically similar to this. And so how, how are we going to think about um, a Dane feeling? Um, so, so the infilling, the way I want to think about it is uh, a way to, to get rid of subgroups that are not hyperbolic. So the infilling is uh, take a subgroup uh, which is not hyperbolic and, um, and make it finite in a quotient. And why do you do that? So you make the whole group more hyperbolic by doing that. That, that's, that should be your goal. So that's the philosophy. Uh, 
Yep. Like, why do you take the client? Why not make it elementary, right? That's yeah. no longer abstraction. Yeah, you can also do that. You can definitely also do that. And um, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, and indeed, the uh, uh, Thurston's name filling yeah, makes it, uh, makes it that. Um, I don't know. Um, right. The, the version that I'm going to discuss is makes it fine. All right. So, so right. What are non hyperbolic subgroups of mapping class groups? So what's the, let's say, the obstruction to hyperbolicity um, of mapping class group? Well, so, so one way to, um, to make, well, free abelian subgroups, that would be the uh, most natural obstruction, is that you can take two, uh, two disjoint curves, simple closed curves. Let's make them not isotopic. Okay, and, and then, um, and then, you can make you can look at the day twists around those curves. So there are these mapping classes supported on annuli. Okay. And uh, the subgroup generated by the day twist is isomorphic to z square. Okay, so these are these are the A little picture, maybe. Why not? So it is my surface. Uh, one curve is here. It's the color, okay. This color, okay, so beta alpha. Okay, so there's an annulus here. There's you, you can twist around this annulus and twist around this annulus independently uh, because you know uh, this annular are disjoint, and then and then you get a z square out of that. All right, so yes, so you would like to, uh, in, in keeping with this philosophy, you would like to make the intuits um, finite order in a quotient. That's not quite the whole, um, you know, you should be aware that you cannot expect to already find a hyperbolic group there uh, in this way, because there's there's lots of other product subgroups in the mapping class group. So more generally, uh, do I have space? Yeah. So more generally, whenever I have two disjoint subsurfaces, okay, so maybe maybe I have this subsurface and this subsurface, I could pick homeomorphisms that only act on one of the two. So, so maybe phi only acts here, and then it's the identity elsewhere. I could have psi acting here, um, and on the rest is identity, and this would commute. So, okay, so, so if I have this picture, then, uh, then phi and psi commute. And so if they're, and if they're infinite order, they generate a z square. So, all right, um, but okay, so, so the obstruction to hyperbolicity of the mapping class group is quite complicated um, because mapping class groups are not relatively hyperbolic. So, so maybe we're gonna have to do it one step at a time. And let's, let's focus on kind of the simplest type of obstruction, which is given by the interests. All right, so let's call it a level one, uh, the infilling. Level one, the infilling. Uh, let's fix a surface. So, so fix the surface. Um, I think I don't have to say, well, that's a no fake surface. Maybe, maybe it works for all surfaces, but I'm gonna say anyway. So let's exclude a few, um, few small examples. And then uh, what do I want to do? I want to mod out uh, powers of the interest. So, so I want to define the subgroup generated by the interest. Okay, so. Oh, alpha, alpha curve. All right. So, and, uh, and that's the subgroup I will want to mod out uh, by and say something. So, hmm? oh, sorry, delta to the k. Yes. So, some power of the interest. Some, thank you. I want to mod out some power, some large power of the interest. Um, so, this, um, right. So, this is a normal subgroup uh, because um, conjugates of the interest are the interest. Um, I could also just pick one um, one topological representative for each orbit of curves, and and then have this have this generated by finitely many uh, powers of the interest as a normal subgroup. Anyway, so uh, right. So what can we say? Um, so here's what we can say. Uh, so it's a theorem with Jason Burstock, uh, Mark Hagen. Uh, Alex Martin and myself. 
so so we i mean we cannot um, i mean we we sh cannot uh, do all powers of the interest i mean for, for any k and uh, there's going to be some restriction you need some kind of uh, some analog of the the bad set right some and in this case um it's not quite all sufficiently large k it's uh, only slightly more complicated than that so there exists n uh, such that for all k multiple of n so so we can we can say something about the mapping plus group mod then twists and what we can say um, is that this thing is has the same structure as the group we started with and what's the structure that the mapping plus group has it's uh, it's called uh, hierarchically hyperbolic but you know today i today i'm not gonna preach hhs this so uh, uh, I think I, mean, I think I mean I want to I want to convince you that this group these groups are interesting like whether like whether you believe in HHS justice or not so I'm not going to mention them ever again. Okay. So this thing has quadratic name. Right. That's already. Yeah. <laughs> That's already an interesting theorem to prove about, about a group that uh, has quadratic linear um, I could have written, I could have written a number of other uh, other results, of other results but that is uh, as, an just, uh, as an indication that you can understand this group. Um, and you can say, and you can say about every single lot is one of the function financial, we can mention we had the course, we had the catalog, lots of different things, so different javascript, but javascript quadratic linear function. So there exists a very down, not very large, not very large number, and then whenever, and then whenever it will come on to call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I have to admit, I have to have a lesson by one lesson by two lessons. Not really, I don't really know. I mean, actually, no, okay, actually, actually no, okay. if you, okay, if you gave me $3 million, I would find the number, I think I could find the number. I, could find the number. I, I think, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, all right, all right, very good. So, uh, as for the name function, not linear name function, which is, would be like, you know, the goal was to make us something hyperbolic, but, uh, but yeah, so so we were not expecting something hyperbolic because um, this this type of like you know you will still have z square subgroup. So what happens? What, what you expect will happen, and what actually happens? So you have some z square subgroups constructed in this kind of way, for example, uh, in the mapping test group, which do survive in the time. So this this still contains uh, z squares coming from the joint subsurfaces, right? Yeah. So I um, I don't think we, we I don't think it's written, but yes, I think it's correct. So uh, similar statements are written like that. The uh, I mean the copy of the curve graph of that subsurface containing the main curve graph is what you expect, but not. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that this are true. Um, yeah. All right. So, so right. But what you can say is that for for this one uh, one old torus case is actually that the image is hyperbolic. The image of this will be hyperbolic. Right. So the image of the yeah the mapping cost group of this surface with boundary. So the the, the stuff that access the identity here. Yeah. Yeah. The number of Yeah. Right, so it goes down by one. So you 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 killed a level of the hierarchy. You can you remove a level of the hierarchy. And what I was gonna say, actually, thank you for the segue, <laughs> is that uh, yeah. So so you can. Uh, so the idea was that we would be to proceed to proceed further and kill the next level uh, of the hierarchy in a subsequent in a subsequent step. So so level n, uh, the infilling is to take further quotients. Okay, so um, 
right? So you want to to like the image of the mapping plus group of this subsurface is uh, is infinite in there. You want to make it finite in a further portion. And okay, so let me let me state something about this procedure. Okay, so in that uh, this same paper, um, we uh, so. So if you if you proceed and and do take further quotients and further quotient and so on, what you uh, what you get to the end to the end is that the mapping class group. Uh, so so you is you make a um, a hyperbolic quotient, an infinite hyperbolic quotient, and you have some flexibility in how you make these quotients, um, and then and then this flexibility. Um, allows you to to study various uh, various questions that that people ask so for example read us whether convex co-compact subgroups are separable okay. if you don't know what this means it doesn't matter um and brightson reed and wilton asked um if the mapping class group is omnipotent for for pseudonosovs uh, which has something you know which is related to some profinite rigidity Questions, so it's not quite omnipotent. Let's say omnipotent, omnipotent minus for pseudonosovs. Okay, so you are, you can do lots of wonderful things. Um, there's a big if. Okay. I'm not done stating the theorem. Okay. <laughs> so, so what is it? So, how, what is it that you're taking the quotient? So, so, so you're taking further quotients, but. Uh, what kind of further quotients? So you have some um, right. So, so so in this quotient, you have some products of hyperbolic groups, and then you would like to make these hyperbolic groups finite. And then in the next quotient, you will have some products of hyperbolic groups, and you would like to make these hyperbolic groups finite. And you can, if you know that there are finite index subgroups of those hyperbolic groups, but you don't know that there are. <laughs> So let me state it as if enough hyperbolic groups uh, are residually finite. So, so we don't know uh, if we can actually do this. So let me. No, no. Yeah. So these quotients that you like the specific hyperbolic groups that you encounter in this uh, in this procedure. So yeah, I mean, I could have written all hyperbolic groups are residually finite. Um, that's, I guess, probably not true. I mean, I asked ChatGPT. ChatGPT says it's not true. <laughs> but but it but it also says that Z is not residually finite. So I don't know. That was that was the example that uh, that it gave me. Of, uh, uh, so, <laughs> so yeah. So so I would like to. Okay. Like, do we have a discussion panel on so GPT for GGT and other, yeah, other. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway, so I would like to to compare this um, to to the state of the art, uh, maybe ten years ago, no, a bit more uh, of the virtual hacking conjecture, which was like you know the virtual hacking conjecture is true if enough hyperbolic groups are residually finite. Um, so. So maybe like you know what what we need basically is a is a Dani that makes a like you know a large enough supply of residually finite hyperbolic groups um, and then and then we can uh, we can prove all these things, all these uh, nice things. Explain someone what HHS is and getting to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no HHS anywhere here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Exactly. So. <laughs> Um, okay, um, right, what else do I want to say? Is, yep. is this enough? Does it have a, yeah. you have a predictable picture of what is this enough? Um, right, I don't have a, a good, um, a, a, yeah, a good class. I mean, you could, you could say, okay, hyperbolic groups with property of fate, but that's not. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so one concrete thing, so, so one, one concrete Thing that I would like to to write here uh, is a question. One one place to start is this group. 
Okay, so I would like to know, I would first of all like to know that this specific groups are residually finite. So the question is NCG S. Ah, uh, yeah, um, and I forgot to say, um, right. Or maybe you want to show that there's a hyperbolic group which is not residually finite, in which case you just have to show that the mapping class group of the genus 19 surface um, doesn't have a hyperbolic quotient. I don't know which one you believe. All right, so but what, what I would like to advertise is just like studying, studying this, uh, this group. So, so this is a group um, of independent interest, I find. Uh, well, okay, so it's residual finiteness is related to, to this type of thing, but, but this group shows up in various different ways. And you know, this, <laughs> this quadratic Dame function point of view, is only one one way to approach um, this. So, so let me let me mention a couple of ways in which, um, like a couple of uh, directions in which people have approached, like you know, people have seen this group show up, uh, or these groups, I should say. Um, so, so this, um, so. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm gonna write one line that I don't, but I don't know why this is the case or or anything like that. So, so this thing, I, I just I've just been told that it, this is of interest uh, in topological quantum field theories. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> so, but it, I mean, it's a good sign if uh, the same mathematical object shows up in two completely different ways. I find so, um, and also there's a. Um, so they don't write it as a conjecture, they write it, we suspect that, um, so it is a suspicion, not a <laughs> suspicion of uh, Coulon and Sela, uh, and they suspect that that this uh, group, may, maybe I have to add plus or minus, Remy, yeah? No? No? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so this, uh, yeah, for suitable case, I should say. Um, so this is the same as the outer automorphism group of the of the Burnside portion, corresponding Burnside portion of the phi one of the surface. So it shows up in different ways. That's um, it's it's an object that's um, that I find it's worth investigating. I mean, this and related portions um, uh, of mapping class groups. Um, right. Okay. So in this uh, in the spirit of studying this group, um, I want to tell you about more. So this was uh, work from not super recent. So I want to tell you about recent work on this group um, with my future PhD student uh, Manjun. Okay. Hmm? Any question? DTK is. Uh... Generated by a single power of a single Dane twist, right? No, no all Dane twists. All Dane twists. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah all Dane twists. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That can't be right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right. So, um, and here's a. So, right. Essentially, it's uh, three rigidity theorems um, on, on this group. So, a different flavor of rigidity theorem. The first is geometric rigidity so quasi geometric rigidity okay, so uh, all right and so so at the moment we can actually um so i'll tell you why but uh we can uh, we can only look at puncture spheres so so we, we only have something to say about puncture spheres uh so p at least seven punctures Okay, um, so let me let me simplify the quantifiers and just say for all k large multiples, so it's the same quantifiers. Um, so let me and let me give a name to, yeah, p with with p at least seven. Sorry, with p at least seven punctures. Uh, okay, so k okay, large multiples. So this this group, M C G. Um, all right, so, uh, is QI rigid? Actually, I don't have to, to say what that means because thankfully, uh, like Emily was kind enough to uh, 
to explain it. So this is, is quite geometrically rigid. Okay, so the puncture sphere part I will explain uh, in a few minutes. Um, the P at least seven, the, the difference from like six and below and seven and higher is that six and below, this group is relatively hyperbolic actually. Uh, so it would be, yeah. Um, so it's it's kind of very different. So passing from like, yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's quite different, the, the case. So I, I don't know how to, it would be. Uh, yes, so, uh, so let's see. So six, can I draw a hexagon? So, this is a six puncture sphere. So it's hyperbolic for less than five. For six, um, it's relatively hyperbolic relative to what's left of the of these products of this product region, of these product subgroups. Like mapping class group of this times for mapping class group of that times the interest. Um, okay, so so right. So as Emily discussed, this is a very strong form of rigidity. It implies other forms of, uh, of rigidity. Uh, for mapping class groups, this was uh, QI rigidity was proven by uh, Berstow, Kleiner, Minsky, Mosher, and Amstad also. Um, and so, in, but let me let me tell you um, one consequence. So, so we first prove QI rigidity, and then we use it to prove another form of rigidity, uh, which is. You know, not immediate, but essentially the hard part is QR rigidity. Uh, let me write it here. So I guess that the insight of geometric group theory is that if you understand the geometry group of a group, you understand something about the algebra of the group. So that's uh, it's good to put it in practice. Um, so so same uh, same as previous theorem. Um, the okay, let me not repeat that. So the automorphism group is pretty much as small as it can be it's the just yeah the, there's a i mean this is contains it is contained as an index to subgroup in something slightly bigger and that's the automorphism group and the same would be uh like if there's a similar statement for the abstract commensurator as well so um so yeah it doesn't have many automorphism it doesn't even have many um, isomorph isomorphisms between finite index subgroups. All right. Um, I'm not sure, wait, what, why? Ah, ah, in this, uh, in this, right. Uh, like if there's, yeah. Yeah, so there should be, but, but maybe there is a version where, um, it's not the whole outer automorphism group. You have to preserve the punctures or something. Well, Remy, I guess, might have some insight on that. Sure. Yeah. Do you have a, an equivalent suspicion for puncture spheres? Well, first, the back is not function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Very good. So, but in any case, um, well, we can say something about the algebra of this group, not, not the, the thing that we, we would really like to, <laughs> to know about the algebra of this group, but at least something. Um, so, right, so for mapping class group, this, uh, the, the analogous statement is uh, due to Ivanov. Um, and actually, that yeah, predates QI rigidity, but, but this time it's really first QI rigidity than this. Um, and speaking of Ivanov, um, there's this famous paper um, where where he proves that the uh, the automorphisms of the curve graphs are just the ones you expect, and that's the starting point for all kinds of rigidity theorem for mapping class groups, and also for us, uh, there's this form of kind of combinatorial rigidity. So an Ivanov theorem for um, for the quotient of the curve graph by, by powers of the interest. So the automorphisms of yes and DTK. And this it's basically just the group. Um, well, except I have to put plus or minus. So 
Henry pointed out to me earlier that we need a better name for the, we need a name for this group. So if you have any suggestions, because <laughs> yeah, I, I keep writing it, but I, I would like a name. <laughs> Great. So, um, yeah. right, yeah. I don't know what you said, it, but paragraph five, uh, this group, that is the top level paragraph. Yeah. 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 This is this thing is hyperbolic. Um, that's the right. So, so basically, um, there's some quadratic name function machinery that, uh, <laughs> that we use. <laughs> That you can use to to reduce qi rigidity to a combinatorial problems and that's the combinatorial problem and then you have to solve the combinatorial problem and, and so to solve the combinatorial problem actually we use uh, I, I should mention that we we're um really follow work of of Bowditch on the qi rigidity of pants graphs because this this group looks more like the pants graph than than yeah I mean, it's, it's a closer relative of the Panscraft than a relative of the mapping class group in terms of the geometry. Uh, mm -hmm. And no, not quite. I, I can tell you what I mean. In, uh, yeah. You are way ahead. Way ahead. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, oh, I wanted to. to uh, tell you a little bit how we prove this. Um, so idea of proof in the remaining time. So for the so I need a diagram for the idea of proof. Don't worry, it's smaller than Stefano's diagram. So okay, what do we have? Uh, we have the curve graph, which has this quotient, which is another graph that we the one that we want to study. And we we take an automorphism, so that's an automorphism. Okay. And this thing, um, well, I mean, this is the same map as, as the other one. All right, so very good. Um, what you what you would like to do is say um, this map lifts, and then I can use my knowledge of automorphisms of the curve graph, right? So so if this was a cover. Uh, like you know, if this was a universal cover, then you know, just nonsense, general nonsense would tell you there's a map here and there's an automorphism here, and you would be, uh, you would be happy. So, but it's very far from a cover. Uh, I mean, the interest fixed points. So it's, uh, um, so definitely you cannot just use covering theory. Um, so, so what we do instead is um, we. Um, we use um, like a stronger version of uh, Ivanov's theorem, uh, proven by Aramayona Leninger. <laughs> so let me tell, let me write down what they prove. Okay, so, yeah. so essentially, they prove that an automorphism of the curve graph is determined on a specific finite subgraph. Okay. So let me write this precisely. So there exists. Well, an explicit, uh, it's, not, it's not just an existence result, an abstract existence result. It's a concrete graph, uh, explicit finite uh, graph uh, X in CS, um, such that any uh, embedding from X to, uh, it's even stronger than embedding, but Let's, let's say embedding X to CS um, extends to an automorphism. Okay, so let me, let me draw a little diagram. So you have this, uh, this X. So it, it already embeds in the curve graph. So I, I said it's, it's a container curve graph. Um, and then maybe, maybe I can find another embedding into the curve graph. And the point is that the only way um, I can construct this embedding is by composing the one that I have with an automorphism. Very good. So that's nice. So it reduces to kind of a finite, um, uh, finite, 
problem, let's see. So back to the diagram, um, we have this X finite rigid set, they call it, which maps to here. Um, and then what would I, um, what would I like to do? Well, I have a map all the way to here of this X, right? And what, um, so if this, uh, let's call it, I don't know, Psi. So if Psi lifted to here, then at least I would have a candidate automorphism from CS to CS. So, okay, so let me write it here. Uh, so Phi Psi lifts gives me a candidate. So it's not at all obvious that the candidate works, um, but at least we have a candidate, yeah. candidate phi, phi bar. All right, so, so this, um, yeah, this tells you why lifting things is important. Um, and so there's this particular explicit finite graph that we have to lift. Uh, we have to lift more things to, to make sure that the candidate works and then even more things to, to make the to make the proof of uh, let's say QI rigidity works, but but yeah, so that's the basic idea. You have to show that things lift. And this would be automatic if this was a you know, if this map had large injectivity radius, uh, but it doesn't, it really does. So what I wanted to show you now is the, the most basic. Um, so I'm not gonna show you how you lift that graph, it's quite complicated. Um, I wanted to show you instead how you lift geodesic triangles, which is how you prove that, uh, that this thing is, um, is hyperbolic. All right, so let's go here. So essentially it is, uh, okay. Okay, so this, this will give you some kind of a flavor of the, the type of arguments that we have to push like, you know, quite a bit further um, to, to achieve that. All right, so uh, again, we have the same map um, from CS down to CS mod DTK. And we want to show that this, this um, is hyperbolic, that this graph, this metric space is hyperbolic. So we take a geodesic triangle and if we could lift it um, to a geodesic triangle, we would know that this, geodesic that, that this is uh, Thin, right? Because geodesic triangles are thin here, so to yeah. So you cannot do that, but what you can do is regard this as a as a path. Okay, so you go around this edge, like paths you can lift. It's just a simple shell map. Um, but what happens is that you lift it to something that's not quite doesn't close up, um, but you know that the two endpoints are related by an element of the uh, of the kernel. So there's some there's some uh, how to call it G uh, in the kernel, which maps one point to the other. All right. So what you would like to do is change the lifts so that um, so so this picture closes up. Oh yeah, I should say that this is uh, this argument is already in a paper of uh, Damani Hagen and myself. Where, where we showed that the mapping class group mod then twist is a cylindric hyperbolic. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's do a simple case. So G can be a very complicated product of, uh, of powers of Dane twist, but let's say just, it is just one Dane twist. So G is you know, alpha to the K. Okay, so, so this very large power of the twist. Now, there's a, um, there's a theorem of Mazur and Minsky, which is called the bounded geodesic image theorem, um, which, um, which tells you that alpha cannot be far from this picture. So if you know the theorem, you will see why this is true. If you don't know, just believe me, alpha needs to be within distance one of these three sides. So alpha could be here for example. And, and right, so that's great um, because now what I can do is I can keep the lift fixed uh, here 
and then just rotate. So apply the, the increase around alpha, which fixes this point. So this is a curve discharge from alpha. And so you, you rotate it uh, using, I guess, tau alpha to the minus k. Okay, so, so you apply G inverse to this part of the picture. And what happens is that, you know, you brought this point back to here. And then, and then you found, uh, so this is still a lift of the original triangle and um, now it's closed. Now, now yeah, you know, now, now it's actually a geodesic triangle. Okay, so, uh, right, so this was a, a very, uh, very special uh, case. So this is just a part of the twist. Um, if not, so if not, um, you have to use uh, some machinery that, developed by Francois Damani. So use uh, Damani means, I don't know, can I call it shortening? Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, shortening. Um, so essentially this tells you that um, you can find, so, so that, that you can replace G by something by some power uh, like this, and, and this has lower complexity in some sense. And well, there's a large sub annular subsurface projection onto alpha. So which means that the, uh, which means that you can apply this theorem that I didn't state. And, and, then, and then you have the same, uh, the same type of feature. Okay, so this is uh, lower complexity. Okay, and it's, yeah. And yeah, you can you can use uh, uh, you can use results from this paper as a black box. Uh, thankfully, because it's a very complicated paper. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Yeah, it's kind of early, but actually, I think I'll stop here. Okay, thank you. So the link with PQFT is that there are this quantum representation mm -hmm. that factor to the portion. Yeah. I don't uh, know if they are faithful, but they are asymptotically faithful. Can this help you? <laughs> uh, uh, it might. It, there is a case of that for a big K. I don't know. It, it might. So, for example, it would be amazing to use that to, to show residual finiteness uh, in some way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or yeah, something I can't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it should give you some information, uh, certainly, like, you know, just like looking at the, the map from the mapping close group to you know, action homology, symplectic group. Um, I, I haven't explored that. That's something to think about. Yeah. Is there any introduction for these portions of the mapping close group to be cut uh, Right. So. So is there any obstruction for these quotients of mapping class groups to be cut zero? So yeah, so that's that's a good question. So um, so the ma mapping class groups don't like to act on cut zero spaces. So you might wonder, okay, maybe maybe I'm making some non-cut zero hyperbolic group or something. Uh, but uh, I'm not so sure because the the obstruction to for for cut zero ness is the twist really. So you're you're kind of killing the, that obstruction. So it, it is quite possible that um, that this group is cut zero. I'm I, I don't know. Yeah. You mentioned something about, I mean, when, uh, I mean, in response to Mahan's question, you said something about hyperbolic groups of the property that they. I know, just like, you know, to restrict the class of groups in any, like, you know, in some way. Uh, yeah. Okay, Would be. How do those, uh, like, where does that condition? Uh, I mean, the mapping class group doesn't act on trees, and so portions don't act on trees. So it's, it, it wasn't a particularly deep, you know, it, I, I, I wasn't expecting that to be a helpful uh, yeah, yeah, condition. I, I think I just don't understand where this is. Uh, if they were all residually that would be enough for this theory. Yeah. The, yeah. But the hyperbolic groups are subgroups of quotients of. Yeah. yeah. The, the, they're all portions of some mapping class group ah. of a puncture surface. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Alessandro.